Today, FCA pulled the covers off of their all-new infotainment architecture. We will be seeing this in a number of new vehicles in 2020. You should probably see some very, very soon, although I'm not allowed to tell you what they will be in or exactly when that's going to happen. The new Uconnect system looks very much like the outgoing system. I'll go ahead and post the pictures that we were able to get out of FCA right up front. You can see that it looks very much like the existing Uconnect system right there. The graphics have been changed a little bit. It looks a little bit flatter, a little bit more modern. But the big deal is behind the scenes because we get a much faster processor. Uconnect is already one of the more responsive infotainment systems, but it can still lag, especially if you were to do something like load an app, the performance pages if you're in an SRT vehicle, etc., or if you're switching between some of the various system functions, sometimes there is a little bit of a delay. To address the speed, FCA did a number of things. First off, they increased the speed of the processor. It's likely going to be running an ARM 8.3 or 8.4 family processor. We don't know exact details just yet, but they say it's five times faster than the outgoing processor, and it should be approximately the same as sort of a mid-level tablet computer that's currently out on the market. The other thing FCA decided to do was move from the QNX embedded operating system to a variant of Android that Google has designed specifically for in-vehicle applications. In reality, that's not quite as much of a seismic shift as it sounds because QNX and Android are very similar in terms of their overall design. They're both Unix style operating systems. And so that means that development time was reduced, but it also means that development time will be further reduced in the future because of some of those programming tools we see from Google and the ability to generate certain Android apps that could then be integrated into the system a little bit more easily. This is going to be building on a key feature of Uconnect that's a little bit different than some of the competition, the ability to add some of those apps through their integrated market system within Uconnect. So you should expect to see that particular feature expand. One of the first integrated apps that we'll see there is the new integration of Amazon Alexa. That's kind of an interesting twist in the system. We see this kind of integration in the Toyota infotainment systems, but it looks like FCA is taking it to the next level and integrating it a little bit more thoroughly within the Uconnect system. So it appears, although we don't know exactly for sure yet, but it appears that it will look very much like one of your Echo Dots or Echo devices with the integrated screen. They've also updated the navigation software. It is using TomTom's navigation database, and it will be using real-time updates for the mapping interface. Also kind of an interesting twist because we don't really see that in too many vehicles out there. That's going to make it a little bit more similar to what we see, for instance, in modern Tesla models with their mapping interface that is updated live. Now, at this point in time, we don't know how frequent those updates will be or exactly where the data is going to come from. I have to say that I kind of wish that FCA had opted for a Google mapping interface in that because the Google satellite imagery is very good. However, that could come later in the future. Speaking of the future, one limiting factor of the current Uconnect system is that it was not designed to really accommodate a wide variety of different screen sizes and shapes. It was pretty much designed for the 4x3 screens that we see in most of their products, and of course, recently, the new large format display that we see in the Ram 1500. But that Ram 1500 has some definite software limitations because it's on the older generation of Uconnect. The new generation is going to be able to support up to four different displays, which is an interesting twist. Kind of makes me wonder where all those displays will be in the vehicle. And it will support a wide variety of different formats. Long rectangular displays like we see in a lot of luxury vehicles, long portrait displays like we see in the Ram 1500. In addition to supporting multiple displays, it's also going to support very high resolution displays. It's going to be capable of displaying about 15 million pixels total across all four displays. So you could definitely, for instance, run a 4K display right there in the center of the dashboard. Another change to the user interface is that we're now going to have a home screen that is customizable. You'll be able to drag a number of different widgets onto the home screen so that way you don't have to dig through menus for frequently used features. You'll be able to do, for instance, infotainment, phone, nap mapping data. Uh, you could drag your heated steering wheel, heated seat controls right there onto that screen as well. But at the moment, the one thing we don't see there is an Apple CarPlay or Android Auto interface. We're told that that might come later. It really just depends on their overall development priorities and what they can get those various manufacturers to agree with. Speaking of Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, it is still going to operate the same that we see in the current Uconnect system, where the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto uses the middle of the display, leaving the top bar, which shows things like your seat temperature, your steering wheel, your profiles, etc., and the bottom, which has the direct access buttons to various features, will be intact. So you'll still be able to access those features very easily when CarPlay is running. Another big change is that we now have the ability to add six different profiles for drivers, and we're told that these will control not just seat functions, but also mirror position, 
the temperature of the cabin, your particular preferences, the way that you've laid out the infotainment system, etc. You'll be able to switch between those various different driver profiles. Another interesting change is the ability to support two Bluetooth devices simultaneously. You could, for instance, have one designated for media, one designated for your phone, or both devices could be connected for both functions at the same time, and you can swap between the two within the user interface. The other big change is that Alfa Romeo is now going to be getting Uconnect, and I think that's an interesting twist because the current generation Alfa Romeos do not use Uconnect. However, Maserati vehicles do, and I think that's been an asset to Maserati. A lot of folks have given Maserati a bit of a hard time for using Uconnect, but to be perfectly honest, when we take a look at Alfa Romeo, you see an exact example of why luxury brands that are small in volume really should be using mainstream infotainment systems. Developing a new infotainment software that is functional, quick, snappy, easy to use, etc. is very expensive. And frankly, a lot of small volume manufacturers out there like Jaguar Land Rover just don't get it right. So by using Uconnect and then changing things, updating things for those luxury car brands, you end up getting a much better and a lot more robust infotainment system. Bugs, for instance, are very common in those smaller volume infotainment systems out there that we see from Jaguar Land Rover, Aston Martin, etc but we don't see that same kind of thing in Maserati models that are using Uconnect, and thankfully that will start applying, of course, to the Alfa Romeo vehicles. Now we don't know exactly how the interaction is gonna be in those Alfa Romeo systems because they currently do use a control knob. Uconnect may end up using a control knob as well in some of those systems. We just don't know exactly yet. But we do know that the screen technology is gonna be updated because it is gonna support swipe gestures. That's gonna be a big change in this generation of Uconnect and you will be able to get your hands on it in several vehicles by the end of the 2020 calendar year. And we should see at least one of these vehicles on sale or at least being debuted in very, very short order. So be sure and stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, let me know what you think about Uconnect down there in the comment section below. As far as the mainstream segment goes, where Ford, GM, Toyota, FCA, all those manufacturers play, I think that the Uconnect system and the system that we see in Hyundai Kia vehicles are two of my certain favorites here. I think the Uconnect system's interface is a little bit more attractive. It also is a little bit more feature rich than what we see in Hyundai Kia vehicles. But at the moment, the Hyundai Kia system is a little bit snappier and has a lot of different screen formats, both of those things will be addressed in this Uconnect software update. And I think this puts it a significant step above what we see in the current generation Sync product or the infotainment products, especially from General Motors, Toyota, and Honda as well. Now it is worth noting that we should be getting our hands on the all new Ford Sync system in the new Mustang Mach-E. So be sure and hit that subscribe button down there at the bottom of your screen if you haven't already done so. I'm really excited about that particular system. I'll see you all later.